Hello everyone, welcome back to On the Couch with David and Travis. We just watched the episode Jet, episode number 10 of season 1. It was actually much better than I remember it being. It's a pretty good episode. I liked it. I thought it was good. I don't know why, but I guess my sort of thing for these episodes is sort of looking for the message or the sort of metaphor they're going in. And this has a good one about um, civilians in war, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. It's really interesting. It's like... Do well. It it's very strongly intimate in intimating that sacrificing civilians in order to defeat your enemy isn't worth it, which is a very big part of like real life war. Yeah, and that's a big question about real life war, mm -hmm. especially now with like larger weapons. Like, yeah, well, there was areas. a big thing with like chemical warfare as well. Yeah, so. yeah, exactly. Um, and it's also not letting your hatred get the best of you because mm -hmm. Jet does let that happen. I guess I just don't like the character of Jet. As Jet's well. I just, I like this Jet's episode. just a... He's, he's a annoyed. jerk. He's, an, he's just annoying. I don't like his design. I don't like his attitude. I don't like his voice. It's really like... His design, his character, the whole setup is very much like Hook. I don't know if they're trying to do that on purpose. I, I, well, I guess again, they're trying to do like a Peter Pan. Again, or like, like Lost thing. Boys um, and Merry Men were mm -hmm. the two things I thought of. Because it's like, in the forest, a bunch of people who don't have a family get together and... You know, play tricks on people. But is Robin Hood really the good guy, I guess, is the question. Well, Robin Hood is supposed to be the good guy. Well, I guess that's sort of the idea of this episode is, you know, what if he took it a little too far? Yeah, exactly. What if he didn't steal from the rich and gave to the poor, but just stole from the rich? Or just killed people. Yeah, that too. He's, I guess, yeah, that's the thing is sort of like the greater good idea if he just wants to see people die and as long as it's fire soldiers that end up doing it, then he's happy. But, yeah. But, you know, at what cost is sort of the idea. Yeah. And this is, I guess it's kind of harsh because we've gotten two and it's sort of like some other ones lately where Katara makes the big mistake of the episode and she's the one in the wrong, mm -hmm. which is good to show that because for the first few episodes she was kind of like Miss Goody, yeah, Miss yeah. Fancy Toes, Miss Hermione, mm -hmm. you know, um, Miss David. I, yes. Um, I was kind of sad though because Aang really was not a focus of this episode at all. No. For like... 20 minutes, and then at the end, he had this big, like, two-minute-long fight scene with him, which was cool. It would have been better to see that with but Katara. But it, no, it made no sense thematically. It would have been better to see either Sokka or Katara fight him, is what yeah. I'm saying. And that yeah. made, it's true. I mean, Katara does sort of get, like, the last thing, because she's water-smashing it. Yeah. But it would have been, I guess she's not a good enough fighter, maybe, or maybe they just like, hey, we need to have Aang at this part, so. Yeah, I don't know. I, I liked it. It was cool. It looked really cool. And it was, and there were some parts, like, the part where it's just, like, the forest backdrop and they were, like, jumping through the tree in the foreground. That part was really cool. Mm. Um, the backgrounds are always great in this Yeah. Um, and just, like, having that autumn colors, like, that palette is really beautiful. Um, but I just feel like it didn't make much sense in the context of the episode as to why Aang would be the one fighting him instead of one of the other two. Yeah, I didn't think of that, but it makes complete sense. Now like, and, it, it. and it could have been just as easily, like, Sokka could have been, like, we still could have seen, like, Sokka be the leader by saying, like, Aang, go save the village. Yeah. And then he fights him. Although I really like that moment at the end, and it's kind of simple, it's not exactly extravagant, but that moment where he says that, oh, people didn't believe me when I told them, but the old man came to my side. It was the old man they defended earlier. Yeah. So that was sort of like, you never know who's going to come back to help. And that was, like, a cool, like, yeah. little connection to the end, which mm -hmm. is um, fun. I liked how they destroyed the village. Like, I like how they felt like they could go there. Mm -hmm. Like, and even though nobody died, like, it's still, I feel like, for a kid's show... Like, you could be afraid to... Again, because me, me and Eli were talking about this a lot because we were watching Dragon Ball. There's this whole thing where it first aired in America. You could never talk about or implicate any sort of death. So they went to these lengths to sort of censor and change all these things to go as far to say nobody ever died. So it's really nice... Because that's the stakes here. In real life war, the stakes are death. Yeah. So it's sort of important to keep that as an, op not I guess an option, but an ultimatum. Yeah. Or at least in the mind of people. Yeah. You know, like, it's, this is actually, could mean people are going to lose their lives. I guess part of me, like, looking back, why I thought I wouldn't really like this episode, because I can tell you right now, this is not the last time we see Jet. This is not by far the last time that we see Jet. Ugh. And it's, it's always unpleasant for me. I just don't like him. Like you said, I, his design is like a rip-off of like generic. Yeah, yeah, it looks just like Spike Spiegel. He's got like the little grass thing instead of the cigarette. Except his voice is lame. And, and it seems like he's one. almost animated in a different way than the others. Like, 
the way he's designed, it's not a character that feels like he belongs in this world. Not maybe like a different show, but maybe yeah. that's the point. Yeah, I don't know. We didn't see Zuko at all this episode, but I think that's okay. Yeah, that was fine. Because it felt like it felt like the kind of episode where we didn't need to cut away from yeah. what was going on. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. Ooh. Um, and I felt like all of the mm, like there are some episodes where I'm like, oh, this character is just here to like set up the episode. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I feel like these characters, like the group of kids and like Jen, mm-hmm. at least it like it makes. Sent. It didn't feel like, oh, these are just characters we're introducing just so that this could happen. It makes sense in the grander scheme of the show because this is all about war. Yeah. And this is just, we're, we're going to take an episode, we're going to introduce a character, and we're going to explore one aspect of war. Yeah, exactly. Which I think is maybe why I like this, I, again, going back to like the Kiyoshi or the King the Bumi. Bumi. Just like, especially the Bumi one where it's like, that has nothing to do with really anything the else stake, that's going on. Yeah, the on. stakes were very self-contained. Whereas this one has much more to do with it. And it sort of increases world. the scale, too, because you can sort of see what's going on and how the war is affecting this group of people. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're so, going to... Yeah, next we have... Uh, what I, From what I hear from other people is one of the most divisive episodes of the show. Mm-hmm. The title, I, coincidentally, being The Great Divide. It's interesting. So some people like it, some people hate it. Not really I, I've heard a lot of people say they hate this episode, but I don't know. I kind of like it. Okay. We'll see. I, we'll see. We'll, we'll check see it what out. David thinks. We'll, we'll see on the couch. All right. Casting couch. 